This is what Tesla would do forever. A million investors don't get, okay. They could easily be selling 10 million cars a year at some point in the future. Wow, that's a big, big number. Tesla is the king of all companies. This is another poster child of this bull market. A car company, 88% of its revenue comes from cars. It is a car company selling for seven times sales when the average car company sells for 0.3 to 0.6 times sales. I personally believe that there are issues here, but let's take a look at the numbers to understand. They just reported first quarter deliveries. They delivered almost 423,000 vehicles, but according to analysts at FactSet, they're expecting 400 and 32,000 vehicles. And that's why Tesla is down 6% today, which is April 3rd at 11 a.m. because they missed. Now guys, if they miss by 10,000 units, that's two and a half percent. The stock is down 6%. This should prove that stocks and the sh stocks should not rational. It is not the efficient market theory. The efficient market theory, which is espoused by so many professors out there at all these Ivy League schools says, stocks are fairly valued because it factors all information in. What they don't remember is, it factors in the interpretation of all the information. The question is, is the interpretation correct? If Tesla misses by a few thousand vehicles, how does that really affect Tesla's value? I don't know. Does it affect it? Well, if they're still growing at a healthy clip, what does it matter? What if this estimate had been just egregiously high? 30% growth, 50%, 100% growth when they couldn't do that. Is that reasonable to punish them for that? Now, when it comes to very high flying stocks like Tesla, a stock that was over $400 a share not too long ago and now below 200, it does kind of affect it. Why? Because the ones that grow the fastest are the ones that are gonna fall the most when their numbers don't hit. And that's important for Tesla. Let's take a look at some other things here. Some other analysts had expected less than 432,000, so they did pretty well. Now, I do believe this. They lowered their prices. I do believe, believe demand does appear to be very solid. Listen, it's Tesla. They make a great vehicle, and I love the fact there's no haggling. You go in, you just, do you buy the car or not? People love the car, and I think they're going to do better and better. Elon Musk is a great visionary. The question is, does it mean the stock price is justifiable? So on this channel, what we're trying to do is say, great story, but the stock price and the company are very different. We're trying to find where the price of the stock is below the value of the company. So how do we determine that? Well, let's go look at our software. Let's pull up Tesla right now in our software and just take a look at it. So it's at 195 a share right now, down 6%. Price to sales ratio of eight, so higher than the seven that I said. And like I said, Ford, GM, Honda, Toyota, these are all way lower. They did $81 billion in revenue, also lower than everybody, but have a huge market cap. The market cap of 655 billion is actually greater, greater than Berkshire Hathaway's. And their revenue and profit is way lower than Berkshire Hathaway's. Just keep that in mind. Five-year return on invested capital, very low. But here's the things I do like about Tesla. Gross margins high, way higher than other car companies, except for like Ferrari. The question is, is this sustainable? Profit margin, 15%, way higher than other car companies. Question mark, is this sustainable? Because when you value a company, you have to sit there and make assumptions. You have to sit there and tell a story. The story I would have is, is this sustainable for the long run? If somebody told me this is what Tesla would do forever, that's a lot different value than I'd give if I wanted to make it more like other car companies. But that's why we use our stock analyzer tool, which you'll see shortly, where we can make a low, middle, and high assumptions on the company to come up with some sort of range of values. And with Tesla, with so many different ranges, it, the further we go out, the wider those ranges are gonna be. We're gonna have six, seven times difference between the low price and the high price. And you might sit there and say, what the heck? Well, guys, that's the thing. Tesla's still a newer company. We haven't seen their profitability. Let's look at their income statement. The profitability has only occurred in the last three years. And look at that profit. It's skyrocketed. So is, again, this sustainable? They went from a loss of $75 million up to a loss of $2 billion, and now they profited $12.5 billion. Wow. That's a big, big number. $12.5 billion in profit on $80, $80 billion in revenue. Man, if they can sustain that forever and grow, that's incredible. So let's check out the eight pillars here. All right. So guys, remember, if you have our software, you can do custom pillars. And I have a few custom pillars in here, but I try to avoid those. And I just focus on my main pillars here for me. PE ratio over the last five years, 193. Price to free cash over the last five years, 226. Shares outstanding. They diluted their investors by 22%. They have 22% more shares today than they did five years ago. 
That is diluting investors. That's diluting you as an owner. So if you owned the stock five years ago, you now, even with the growth of the company, you're, you're not getting the full growth. You're getting 22% less than that growth actually occurred. It's not good for investors in the long run. Low ROIC, but that should change as they make more and more money. So I'm not as worried about that. But and of course, net income, revenue, and cash flow, and they have great debt. Okay, so overall, it's a valuation story. Are these valuation numbers justifiable. Well, let's do a hypothetical. Let's say there's two companies out there. Both are making 10 billion a year, but company A can grow at 30% a year. Company B can grow at 5% a year. Would you pay the same amount of money because they make the same amount of money? Absolutely not. You'd have to pay more for the 30% growth per year, all things being equal, because they have more growth potential. They can drive more money to that bottom line much faster. You absolutely should pay more. So when people tell me that as a value investor, I don't get growth, I laugh hysterically. You know why? Stock analyzer tool, very first line, revenue growth assumptions. Growth is an important aspect of value. All value investing means is, can I buy a company for less than it's selling for, that less than its intrinsic value? That's it. And intrinsic value is the value of the business in the long run. And that is driven by growth. So please tell your friends who say, value investors don't get, okay. Why do you think Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger love buying high quality businesses that have high returns on invested capital? That's talking about their moat and their growth potential of profit. So let's see, before we get in stock analyzer tool, let's see what the analyst estimates are saying. So they're expecting Tesla to make $4 a share this year and growing, almost doubling to $8. Guys, that's not that much growth for a company that has been driving all this profit lately. I actually thought I was gonna see like 15 or $16 a share. Let's go down below to revenue growth assumptions. Pretty, actually, isn't that weird? Their revenue growth is supposed to more than double, but their profit isn't even gonna double. That to me says something. And again, these are analysts and they have their biases just like everybody. Look at Silicon Valley Bank. Not a single analyst had Silicon Valley Bank in a cell the week before it went under. That should tell you everything you need to know. Go look back to the 2000s with dot coms. Every single analyst had these dot coms at buy ratings and they went to zero. So just take that with a grain of salt there when you look at analysts, okay? Now, for the stock analyzer tool, I like to look at long term. You can do one to 20 years analysis. I like to do 20 years because I want to buy companies I can hold for for a very long period of time. And Tesla has a great growth story attached to it. They only are gonna sell a million four cars a year this year. But if they can really dominate this market, they could easily be selling 10 million cars a year at some point in the future. The number or more. Look at, I think it's Toyota sells like 15 million. It's some absurd number of cars a year. They could overtake that. They're a great car company. The question is, can they can they convert? Because a lot can happen. In the last five, six years, Tesla was two weeks away from bankruptcy at least two times. Just remember that. Things happen in a 20-year period. Look what's happened in the last 20 years for you. That's why we encourage having that margin of safety. And you'll put the margin of safety in your desired return. If the market's going to do 10% and you make reasonable assumptions here, you should have a higher desired return in order to account for that margin of safety. Because the more return you want, the lower price you have to pay today. So I'm going to run this analysis, but one thing I want you to do, if you like what you've seen here and you see all the software here, look at the tools, all the software comes with all of our data, all the tools. This stock analyzer tool was used 1.3 million times last year, just as many times as cars sold by Tesla. It's all available for a dollar a day, everythingmoney.com. We're running a special $7 for seven days and the price is going up very soon to over a dollar a day. So sign up now, you get locked into your category price. So please hold, I'm gonna put my assumptions in, explain them and give you my value for Tesla. All right, guys. So I, again, like I said earlier in the video, since Tesla has so much more growth potential, I needed to be able to give a wide range. So here are my ranges going out 20 years. Revenue growth, 5, 10, 15%. Now you might sit there and say, oh my God, 15% still so low. At 15% over 20 years, that would make the revenue of the company $1.4 trillion. $1.4 trillion almost. That's a lot. So before you think this number is too low, that's pretty low. Now, 5%, I do think that's very low. I don't think, but that's the point of going in these wide ranges. Let's say they start having union costs. Let's say they start to have issues where states start banning their ability to sell just without a dealership because that's been discussed. So these are the things you have to remember. There are still things that can happen to the company. And I'm just trying to show a wide range. Profit margin. I did six, like a normal car company, all the way to 14. Free cash flow. I did five 
all the way to 11. Now I went lower on free cash flow because I've, I've seen here their free cash flow tends to be lower and car companies tend to have higher capital expenditures. So I'm just going to factor that in there as a lower free cash flow multiple a number. Now for PE, the current PE is 49. If you remember that 200 PE was was five-year PE, and the current price of free cash flow is 81. Now, if you're like that idiot, meet Kevin, who thinks that 70 is a reasonable PE, I would sit there and say, hey, Kevin, uh, it's already at 49, because he was going based off of the PE being 200. So he's like, oh, I'll be conservative and call it 70. When the company is one of the biggest in the world, you got to assign that sort of multiple, and the market's multiple is around 15 or 16. So I went 15, 17, 19, and I think this is egregiously high. 19. Same with price of free cash flow. Now, for my desired return, I really beat this thing up. So I'm okay making 10% on these low assumptions because I don't need to get a high return if I've already beaten it up. Middle assumptions, I put 12% a year for 20 years and high assumptions, 14%. Because the higher my assumptions, the more return I need because they're less likely to happen. Okay. Now I hit the analyze button. The stock's currently at 195. This is what I want to show you for how egregious this company is. Low price in the 20s, high price 115 to 150, middle price of 55 to 66, and look where it's at on my watch list, 60 bucks. So I'm going to get notified, and you'll get notified whatever price you put it at. So guys, Tesla is just overvalued. Could it justify to say yes, but it has to do way better than these high numbers right here. Thank you very much for your time, and please share this video with somebody who's a big Tesla enthusiast. Thank you.